Well, firstly, just, just a, a few words um, about me and my organisation, just to uh, recap what's been said there. It is quite appropriate to give the presentation here. It describes my journey through computer security over the past 20 years, starting in Chris Mitchell's office uh, when Chris, Fred, myself decided who would teach the four core modules on the MSC information security for the first year starting in 92. And uh, I won the battle of wills with Chris. I would teach computer security, which was the subject all of us knew least about. There is no doubt, however, that the profile of information security is changing. There's no doubt it's increasing dramatically almost day by day. Just last year, last, last week, um, the Dutch government had to abandon all of their plans for e-government because the um, certification authority they were using turned out to be untrustworthy for some reason. We don't quite sure why, but it's a changing world. Well, the first thing about trust is that it's difficult to define. We sort of know, think we know what we mean, but nobody ever really has got round to, to, to understand what it's about. So, malware has become very big business. Uh, cyber criminals, cyber terrorists, hostile state actors, APTs, advanced persistent threats. I always laugh when I see that. Advanced, that means it beat your antivirus. Persistent, it continues to beat your virus, antivirus, um, and definitely a threat. Uh, you remember Stuxnet, that lay undiscovered for a year or more before doing some serious damage to the Natanz nuclear facility in Iran? The second of these, competence, is at least something that we can have a few more objective things into. You know, we can ask you, uh, well, show me your MSc certificate from Royal Holloway, and then maybe I believe you know something about information security. It's also asking for a lot more information than you would normally need just to attack someone's bank account. So it's asking in this case for you know, where you were born, your mother's first name, your middle name, name, all sorts of other uh, additional security questions. So what the attackers are trying to do is not just the immediate attack of getting into someone's bank account in order to set up a transaction, but also to use that information or more likely actually to resell that information onto attackers who are interested in doing a full account takeover, full identity impersonation in order to say... Um, uh, take out a mortgage in someone else's name or car insurance or something else. So um, there's, there's all sorts of reasons why someone is collecting this data. Let's take about encryption, because I, I know encryption quite well. And there is no question at all that the use of encryption for confidentiality has always bothered governments. That's a statement I'm happy to defend, and I don't think any government would... And if you look at government's policy on encryption, then crudely speaking, they want or are happy for the good guys, and good has to be in inverted commas because it's their definition of good, to be using encryption for everything that's good. They just don't want it used for bad purposes. I've got a pop quiz for you. What is the connection between the Hoover Dam and the Natanz nuclear facility in Iran? Neither of them, apparently, was connected to the internet. The reason I bring this up is I was at a presentation by somebody who said, I'm forever fed up. In fact, he was in charge of security for the Hoover Dam. And I think one of Obama's aides kept quizzing him, saying, what are you doing about things like Stuxnet? How are you going to stop half of Nevada being flooded? And... His answer was, can't happen. We're not connected to the internet. Completely ignoring the fact that neither was Natanz. You don't need to be connected to the internet. USB keys, for instance, can do the damage just as easily. A lot of trouble at home for swearing at my computer. Um, some of you may have a lot more forbearance, but I'm sure many of you will agree that computers deserve to be sworn at. So, there you are. Trust. I think that sort of sums it up. How, how do you go about getting trust? Experience? 
Have I had a bad experience when I've done that, when I've shown my bottom to a girl? <laughs> or a good one? Last aside, today it is extremely fashionable to talk about the cloud as the new infrastructure for executing software. And it's also fashionable saying we have to secure the cloud. Is this true? Or do we have to secure the applications running in the cloud? That's the end. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>